Hey, so today's video is just going to be a tutorial on how I make my top-down sweater sleeve thing. Um, it's the method that I used in my last video to make this top that a lot of people wanted a tutorial for. Um, I did make a tutorial on my TikTok, but that was like a really short, condensed three-minute version and a lot of people found it difficult to follow, so today is just going to be like an extended, more in-depth version. This is a dress, actually, that I made out of the pattern and I just kept extending the body so you can honestly make it whatever you want but yeah I'm just gonna make I think a sweater or like a pullover thing today so I'll show you how I do it. So the yarn that I'll be using today is actually this like jumbo saver bag that I got from Spotlight. I think the brand is Fashion Plus but I don't know none of the yarn balls have labels so yeah it was just really cheap it was like four pounds for 400 grams or something so I just bought a bag of it and I will be using a 6mm hook, but if you check my Depop and like my TikTok and Instagram and stuff, I did make some like really cropped sleeves and for those I did use a 4mm hook and a worsted weight yarn. I would say this is also a worsted weight yarn, but it's a little bit thinner and it is actually softer than the one that I normally use. So that's what I'll be using today, but you can use like any yarn, any hook. I'm sizing up my hook just so that I get like a baggier mesh effect, but if you want the holes to be tighter and smaller, then just use a smaller hook. Okay, so to start the top, we're obviously going to be working from the neck down, so we're going to make a chain for our neckline. So we're going to make a big chain and then we're going to connect it in a loop like this. So just crochet however big you want yours to be. I've already kind of pre-measured this and I'm going to do 76, but you do however many you want. Um, also, you want to make sure that your chain is an even number, just so that the stitch um, that we're going to do does work um, and also make sure that it is big enough to fit over your head so that you're able to get your top on. Um, so I'm going to chain 76 and then I'll come back. Okay so I've done my 76 chains and now I'm just going to slip stitch into the first chain to make a ring. You want to make sure that your chain is not twisted. I like to go through both loops of the chain just because I think it looks neater. So I've just slip stitched like that. And now you're just going to want to take your hook out and fold it in half. Okay, I fixed the lighting so hopefully it's easier for you to see. But I've just folded my work in half so that the join is in the middle. And then you're just going to want to grab a tape measure and then measure 2 inches from both these ends in. I've got my tape measure, I'm just going to measure two inches, so about here, and you're going to want to get two stitch markers, and then just place stitch markers right where it, the two inches is. So there, and about there, like that. And then I'm just going to repeat the same thing on the other side. So like that. Okay, so now we're just going to do some counting to make sure that our stitch markers are even, otherwise our sleeves might end up different sizes. So I'm just going to count how many um, chains I have between my stitch markers. So I'm going to count where the stitch marker is as 1, 13. So I have 13 stitches on this side, I'm going to count on this side. 13, 14. Okay, so we have an uneven amount of uh, chains between my stitch markers, so we're just going to adjust a little bit just so that it's the same. Okay, so since we have 14 chains on this side and 13 on this side, I'm just going to move my stitch marker one over here. So now there's 15 here, and then I'm going to move this pink one two stitches along to make 15 as well, just because there looks like there's more chains between here and here than there is here and here. So I'm just going to move this start stitch marker two chains along. Okay, 
like that. So now there should be 15 chains between both of the stitch markers. And now we're just going to count how many chains there are between where we slip stitched and each of these stitch markers to make sure that this side is even and um, these bo both these sides are even so that the seam is in the middle and then the front and the back are the same width. So I'm just going to count from this slip stitch here. I'm not going to count this slip stitch, so the next stitch I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's 10 stitches here. Now I'm going to count this side, not counting the slip stitch. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And 11. Okay, so there's 11 here and 10 here. So I'm just going to move both of these stitch markers along one so that there's 11 on both sides. So I move that one along, so now there's 11 stitches here, and then move this one to make sure that there's 15 chains between the stitch markers. And then now I'm just going to count how many chains there are here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And so that's about pretty much even because there's 11 on both sides here, which makes 22 plus the seam stitch, that'll be 23. So I have 23 stitches on both sides. I'm sorry if all that counting sounded really confusing. I promise you just wanna make sure that you have the same amount of chains between your stitch markers because this is where your sleeves are gonna go. So if these aren't the same, then your sleeves will probably come out um, different sizes. And then you also just want to make sure that you have an equal amount of chains between this point and this point and this point and this point so it's kind of even otherwise your seam um, isn't going to be down the middle which will look a bit noticeable just because this is where we're going to do our chain threes for all the rows so the chain three is going to be um, noticeable compared to the rest of the stitches but if you don't really care about it being perfect then it doesn't really matter if these are equal and then you just want to make sure that um, this is going to be the back where the seam is going to go and then this is the front so you just want to make sure that those are roughly the same. Um, if you do have a bigger bust I actually would recommend making this portion longer than the back just so that it um, fits nicer but you don't have to do this. Um, so yeah now I'm going to get started with the stitches. Okay so to start the first row we're going to be doing the mesh stitch. So what that is, is just a combination of triple crochets and chaining. So to start, we're going to chain four. So this chain four will count as a triple crochet and a chain one space. And then we're just gonna skip the next chain and then we're gonna triple crochet into the stitch or the chain afterwards. And then we're going to chain one, skip this chain, and then triple crochet into the next one. Like that. And you're just going to want to repeat this stitch until you get to your first stitch marker. Okay, so I've reached my first stitch marker. I'm just gonna take that out. And then I'm gonna chain and do a triple crochet into that stitch. And so where our stitch markers are, we're actually going to increase. So to increase, you put in a triple crochet. And then you chain one. And then you do another triple crochet into that same chain. like that. So it should make a little V shape and then you're going to chain one and then skip the next chain and then just continue triple crocheting along until you reach your next stitch marker. 
Okay, so I've done that mesh stitch now up until I've reached my second stitch marker. So we're just going to take that out and then repeat that same increase we did in the first stitch marker. So triple crochet into the chain. And then chain one. And then another triple crochet into the same chain. Just like that. And then chain one skip the next chain and then triple crochet into the chain after and you're just going to want to repeat this mesh stitch and increase in all of your stitch markers so i'm just going to do the mesh stitch along until i reach here do my increase mesh stitch until i get here and then increase and then i will show you how to start the next row Okay, so I'm nearly at the end of my row, and I just have one more triple crochet to do. And then to start the next row, we're just going to chain one after you've done the last treble crochet. So treble crochet, chain one, and then we're just going to slip stitch into the third chain from the starting chain four. So one, two, three. Gonna slip stitch like that and then we're gonna chain another four and then we're gonna turn our work so now we're going the other way and you want to turn your work just to make sure that your seam goes down the middle otherwise if you keep working in the same direction your seam might go um, a bit wonky and then to continue the next row we're just going to triple crochet into the triple crochet from the previous row because the chain four counts as a triple crochet and a chain one and then chain one and then triple crochet into the next one and you just want to repeat this until you reach where you placed your increase okay so now I've reached um, my increase from the previous row so we're just going to do the treble crochet, chain one, and then put a treble crochet into the stitch like normal. And then we're gonna chain one. And then we're gonna put an increase in between these two stitches here. So after you've chained one, you're gonna put another treble crochet in between these two stitches here. So just into the gap. Do a triple crochet. And then chain one. And then another triple crochet into the gap to make the increase. And then chain one and then triple crochet into this um, triple crochet in the previous row so that's what your increase should look like so triple crochet into the first stitch and then two triple crochets with the chain in the middle and then another triple crochet in the um, stitch afterwards and then you're just going to repeat with that mesh stitch until you reach the next increase Okay, so just to show you again, I'm at my next increase. I'm just going to triple crochet and then chain one, and then I'm going to do a triple crochet into the first stitch of the increase. Chain one, and then do a triple crochet into the middle of these two stitches, so in this gap here, and then chain one, and then another triple crochet into that gap. and then chain one, and then another triple crochet into the second stitch of the increase. Like that, and then just continue chaining and triple crocheting. So I'm just gonna continue the rest of my round, putting another increase into all of my stitch mark, uh, into all of my increases from the previous row, and then I'll meet you back. I'm nearly at the end of my second row and all the rows end the same way. So once I've done my last treble crochet, I'm just gonna chain one for that final chain one space. And then I'm just going to find the third chain from the starting 
chain four and then slip stitch into that. And then once I've done my slip stitch, I'm just going to chain another four. And then I'm going to turn my work over. So you're just going to keep repeating that um, mesh stitch and then you're going to keep increasing in all of these increases. And so you're just going to repeat that mesh stitch all along until you get to the next increase and then do an increase in there and so on until you reach the next, um, until you reach the end of the row. Okay, so I finished crocheting three rows of my top. So this is what it looks like. Um, I've just done three rows of the mesh stitch and then increasing in um, all of the increases from the previous row, as you can see here. So I'm just gonna repeat this until I reach about here, so maybe four or five more rows, and then I'm gonna start making the holes for the arms. So I'll do about four or five more rows, and then I'll meet back with you when I'm done. Okay, so I crocheted four more rows for my top, which means I have seven rows in total, and this is what it looks like. I've done my increases in each row and on the back as well. And so now for the next row, we're gonna make a chain to go underneath our armpit on both sides to make the armholes. So I'll show you how I do that. So to start this row, we're gonna start it like any normal row. So we're gonna chain four and then turn our work. And then I'm just going to keep doing the mesh stitch until I reach the first increase in my row. Okay, so I've reached the first increase of the previous row, so I'm just going to keep doing the mesh stitch until I reach that gap between the two stitches. So I'm going to put a treble crochet into the first stitch of the increase, like that, and then I'm going to put one treble crochet into this gap. So chain one, and then put one triple crochet into the gap. Just like that. And now this is where we're gonna chain the um, chain for the armhole. So I'm gonna chain 11, but make sure that your chain is an odd number so that your um, mesh stitch lines up. So I've chained 11 here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And then you just wanna find the next increase in the row. So this is the first increase and here is the second increase. You're just gonna put one triple crochet into the middle of that increase there. Just like that. So now you have an armhole. So I'm just gonna mesh stitch until I reach the next increase in the row and then I'll meet back. So I've reached the third increase from the previous row. So I'm just gonna show you again. I'm gonna chain one and then do a triple crochet into the first stitch of the increase. And then chain one, put a triple crochet into the middle. And then I'm just gonna chain 11. So I've chained 11 and then I'm gonna find the next increase in the row. So my next increase is here. So I'm just gonna put a triple crochet into that gap. like that. Chain one and then keep doing that mesh stitch along until you reach the end of the row. I finished crocheting the row with the armholes. This is what it looks like. Um, after you do your chain and then attach it, after you do the first one, I recommend that you just try it on to see whether it fits. I only did 11 chains because I plan to do a flared sleeve so I didn't want my armhole to be too big. So this is what it looks like. It's not too big under my armpit here. Um, but if you want your sleeve to be wider, then I would recommend doing more chains, so either 13 or 15. Just make sure it's an odd number. Um, but as I said, I'm gonna do a flare sleeve, so I didn't want it to be too big here because this is just gonna be the width of the sleeve as you go down now. So if you want it to start out bigger, then do more chains. Um, so now I'm gonna start on the sleeve and I'll show you how I do that. So here I have the back of my top facing me and I'm gonna start on the sleeves. Um, so to start on my sleeves, I'm actually going to grab a new ball of yarn. 
just because I don't want to cut off the current ball I have on here because I do plan to make the body longer so I like to just leave that attached but you can obviously cut that off and then use it for your sleeves if you want so I'm gonna take my new ball of yarn and I'm just going to I think I'm gonna do what's called a standing triple crochet I'm not really sure but I just make a slip knot and then I put it on my hook and then what I do is I yarn over twice for the triple crochet like that and then I insert my hook into this gap here and I like to start my sleeves here just because I think it's kind of hidden it's like on the back in the armpit so I start here and I just do a triple crochet like normal and this is how I start most of my rows with a new ball of yarn so once I have that I'm gonna chain one and then to continue with the mesh stitch so here I have a triple crochet and then there's a chain so to continue the mesh stitch I'm going to put a triple crochet in the very first chain here so as you can see here there's the double double uh, the triple crochet here the chain and so I'm gonna put a triple crochet into that very first chain here like that and then I'm gonna chain one skip the next chain and then put a triple crochet into the next chain and then just repeat this until you reach the end of the chain so now I've reached the end here and I have one chain left I'm just going to triple crochet into this gap here and now I'm going to chain one and I'm going to put a second triple crochet in here just because I'm using a big hook so I don't want to have such a huge gap here because without this it would be kind of a big gap like that so I added a second one just to make it a bit smaller if you've used a smaller hook size and um, or a thicker yarn then just kind of add as many as you need to fill in the gaps and then I'm gonna chain one and then I'm just gonna keep doing my mesh stitch along this portion here so triple crochet in that first double crochet here and then just continue this around the hole for the arm and then since I added um, two triple crochets here I'm just gonna do another triple crochet into this gap here so now I have two triple crochets in total then chain one and then I'm just gonna slip stitch to this first triple crochet here just like that and then I'm going to chain four and then turn the work and then I'm just going to do that mesh stitch again so triple crochet into this stitch here chain one and then just repeat the mesh stitch again all the way around until you reach the end of the row so this is what it should look like so I have my starting stitch here and then the mesh stitch into that chain I put one right in the first chain here so that it continues with the mesh stitch and then continuing around and I think one thing that confused some people from my TikTok video was where to keep putting the increases for the sleeves so for the sleeves I actually don't increase so to make the sleeves it's literally just rows and rows and rows of this this mesh stitch all the way along so there's actually no increases in the sleeve so I think that's one thing that a lot of people were asking me so there are no increases here it's super easy you just keep doing the mesh stitch around and around so I'm gonna keep doing my sleeve and if you plan to just make a straight sleeve then you can just keep doing this for however long you want I do plan to make a flare sleeve so I'm gonna do a few rows and then I'll come back to show you how I do the flare so I finished doing 13 rows for my sleeve and this is what it looks like. Um, I'm going to work on the flare portion now and so to do the flared portion I actually just increase my hook size instead of adding increases in the rows just because I think it's easier and I think it also looks better because the increase always creates a little bit of a V shape so it doesn't look very neat. 
Um, so I'm using a six millimeter hook right now and I would recommend for maybe like two rows, depending on how high you start increasing your sleeve. Um, I would start with a 6.5 millimeter hook for a couple rows and then a 7 millimeter hook for a couple rows until it is as flared as you want. However, I own those hooks but I can't find them in my house anywhere so I'm just going to go straight to an 8 millimeter hook and um, see how that turns out. So I'll probably do about 4 or 5 more rows and then I'll meet back with you. So it's now the next day and I finished crocheting both of my sleeves. This is what it looks like. Um, I ended up doing 13 rows for the 6mm hook and then I did an extra 6 rows using the 8mm hook and the difference between the hook sizes actually is not hugely noticeable so I would actually recommend using an 8 because I feel like it does make a nice difference in the size. Um, so now I'm going to work on the body portion but honestly you could just leave it like this if you wanted to make some sleeves. I do have another tutorial on how to do mesh sleeves that is a bit simpler but I do think this um, method does come out nicer because it gives you like a rounder neckline if that's what you're looking for um, but just for the sake of the video I'm going to show you how I do the body so you can make it longer if you wanted to okay so here I have the bottom of my top and if you left the yarn attached like me then you can just continue um, doing the mesh stitch around so I'm gonna chain four and then turn the work and then I'm going to keep doing that mesh stitch until I get to the armpit. If you uh, cut off your yarn, you just want to reattach it on this chain 4 here in the third chain. Okay, so I'm basically at my armpit now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the mesh stitch into that last triple crochet there. And then we've reached the chain that we made for the armhole. So. To continue with the mesh stitch, I'm just going to chain one and then I'm going to keep putting triple crochets in the chains where there are triple crochets. So I've chained one. And so since there's a triple crochet in that very first chain, I'm going to put a triple crochet in that very first chain. And then chain one. And then skip this chain and put the triple crochet into where this one is. And you just want to repeat this all the way around. It's super simple, it's basically just like the sleeve. And now we're back to the other side, so just keep crocheting all the way along. So now we're onto the front piece. You just want to keep doing that mesh stitch all the way around until you reach this armpit and then do the same thing. And then join back to your chain 4 just like how we have do been doing this whole time. So I've done 3 rows for the body now. This is what it looks like. Um, I think one thing that confused some people in my TikTok tutorial was that I don't do any increases in the sleeves or the body. So once you reach the point where you do the chain for the armhole, you don't do any more increases. So I think that's something that a lot of people are asking in the comments is where do they do the increases? You don't do any more increases. So it's just the rows of the mesh stitch. Um, since I'm at this point now, I'm going to work on making the top a little bit fitted here. So I'm going to switch to my 5mm hook and then once I get maybe to around my belly button, I'm going to go back to my 6 or my 8mm hook, but I will do a couple rows and then I'll be back with you when it's done. So I've finished crocheting all of the rows for my top and this is what it looks like. I even weaved in the ends, oh my god, I never do that, but yeah, I used a 5mm hook in this portion and then an 8 at the bottom so it does kind of flare out a little bit. I will write up a document or something that just explains what I did so if you do want to copy my top exactly then you can. Um, if you do have any questions then just comment and I will try to answer everything. And I also want to apologize for the really bad lighting throughout this video. I filmed this over multiple days using my window lighting so it's just been different every day. I'm so sorry I'm working on it but if you did enjoy the video then you can maybe subscribe and you can follow my Instagram as well because if I do post any of this stuff to sell then I'll post on there um, and yeah thanks for watching